So let's look at composite functions. And what we're going to do as we work through this lesson is perform the composite of two or more functions and also decompose a function. Now, if you remember, a function can really be considered like a machine that generates a value. We put in some input value and we'll get some output, some y or f of x. So if we put into our function the number 4 for x, remember it just takes that x, we input that 4 value, and we're going to generate some number 12 minus 4, we get 8. Just this machine that generates a value. Now we can extend that because a function can also be input into another function. This is what we call a composite function. One function going into the other. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at this example. We're going to use these functions f of x and g of x, and we're going to put one function into the other. And if you notice with this notation, f of g of x, what we're going to do is we're going to put into f of x the value of g of x. So to start here, if we're doing f of g of x, just like before we replaced the x with a number, this time we're going to replace the x with g of x. Whatever is in the bracket goes inside our function. Now the thing about g of x though is it actually has a value. g of x can be replaced with its function x squared plus 2. So let's input that value x squared plus 2 minus 4. Now we can just distribute that 3 in and we'll get a new function 3x squared plus 2. There is our function when we put g inside f. Well, what if we put f inside g? We want to now take the function f and we're going to put that into g. So really what we're doing is we're taking g of x, and instead of replacing it with f of x, this time I'm going to put the whole function in. We're going to do g of 3x minus 4. Well, what does that look like? The 3x minus 4 replaces the x. That whole thing would be squared, and we have our plus 2. Squaring this out, we'll get... 3x minus 4 multiplied by 3x minus 4 plus 2. We can do some expansion here and get 9x squared minus 24x plus 16 plus 2. And in the end, we get this value of 9x squared minus 24x plus 8. There's the value of g of f of x. Now there's an important thing to notice from our two solutions here. f of g of x, our original solution, is not equal to g of f of x. And that's very important. It is very important that we put the right function in because otherwise we're not going to get the correct solution. And this notation for a composite function of putting g into f, we now use this little symbol of a circle, this circle notation, sometimes written in this form, f circle g of x, sometimes just written as f circle g, and how we read this is f of g of x, f of g of x. Now, when we have composite functions, here's the important piece to remember, is that the output of one function can actually become the input of the other. So when we're determining f of g of x, the output that we get with g of x becomes the new input for f of x. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at this example. 
here are some functions. And given these functions, we want to first determine h of g of 3. Now, it's always best to take this notation and write it in a form that's a little easier to see, a little easier to understand. We're going to put g of negative 3 into h. So let's figure out what g of negative 3 is. Just like we've done before, we just plug in negative 3 into our function g, do some quick calculations, we'll get 2 over negative 1, which is, of course, negative 2. Now, that output function for g of negative 3 becomes the input function for h. So what we're actually going to find now is h of negative 2. And if we do h of negative 2, we're really just taking our function h and replacing all the x's with a negative 2. Just plug that value in. From here, we can just multiply this all out and find our solution. So we get 8 plus 10 minus 3, and we'll get a final solution here of 15. Now, that is the solution to our original composite function. 15 is our solution. Now, we can do composite function with numbers or with variables. So when we look at h of i of x, we're really taking the function h and we're replacing the function i of x into h. Well, let's just do that. Take the x's. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to replace it with i of x, which is really x squared minus 9. So x squared minus 9, remember that original x was squared, so this becomes squared minus 5 times x squared minus 9 minus 3. Square the first binomial. If you need to write it out, let's do that. x squared minus 9 squared minus, let's distribute that 5 in and get 5x squared plus 45 minus 3. Now we can expand this binomial. We'll get 2 still, x to the 4 minus 18x squared plus 81 minus 5x squared, always good to combine like terms when we can, plus 42. So let's keep going here, we'll get 2x to the 4 minus 36x squared plus 162 minus 5x squared plus 42. And we're finally at a point where we can combine all of our like terms and get our final solution, 2x to the 4 minus 41x squared plus 204. And there is our final solution, our new composite function of h of i of x. So once we have created a composite function, what we have to consider is the domain of that new function. And when we're trying to find the domain of a composite function, the domain of f of g of x must have any restrictions on g of x, the function going in, as well as the new composite function. Well, what does that mean? Let's imagine we had f of x as this function, 2x minus 3. Notice it's a linear function. The domain of this is all real numbers. If we had another function, g of x, and this time let's take a g of x function and say it's root x, the domain of this function is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if we were trying to find the domain of the new composite function, 
we have to consider the domain of g of x as well as the domain of the new composite function. Now, if we're considering this on a number line, let's think of these two domains. All real numbers on a number line. If there's our number line, there is all real numbers on a number line. And if we put another number line where we want greater than zero, we want all those values. Our new composite function must fit both domains. So our new composite function would really be in this area. The new composite function would have to include x is greater than or equal to zero. Now that might seem a little unclear now, but we're going to do a couple examples to make this a little bit clearer. Here's our two functions, f of x equals 4 over x and g of x equals 2 over x minus 3. We want to determine the composite function f of g of x and its domain. Always a good place to start, write the domain of each of the original functions. So if we look at f of x, the domain x cannot equal 0. For g of x, if we look at the domain x cannot equal 0. 3. So we're always going to keep that in mind because those are going to be part of our new composite function. So let's do f of g of x. Remember, that's really just taking the function f and putting in g. So our function f is 4 over x. We're going to take our function g 2 over x minus 3, and replace the x with that value. So our composite function is going to look like this. 4 over 2 over x minus 3. There's our composite function. Now, obviously, that's not very pretty, so we want to clean that up a little bit. So we can write this as 4 over 1, multiply by the reciprocal of this, x minus 3 over 2, which in the end we'll get 4x minus 3 over 2, which of course becomes 2x minus 3. Now we could expand that out if we wanted to and write it as 2x minus 6, <coughs> but that's our new composite function. So if we look at this function, our composite function, the domain, would be all real numbers. We just have a linear function, so any x values are allowed. But we must consider that the function being put in to our composite function must be included as part of the domain. So our domain is a combination of x equals 3 and x is all real numbers. So to combine those into a single domain, we would write the domain as x such that x cannot equal 3 and x is an element of the real numbers combining those together to form the domain of the new composite function. Well, if we can form a composite function, we can break it apart. We can decompose it. And decomposing a composite function is really quite straightforward because all we're doing is looking for a simple function that could be the input of another simple function. What does that mean? Let's look at an example here. We have two functions, f of x, g of x, and we want to figure out what got combined together, what g went into f to create our existing function, h of x. So we just have to look at our function and see, is there a simple function that we can see? Notice underneath the square root, there's a pretty straightforward quadratic function. If we took that simple function and imagine that's being put into 
f of x. We could take that function, 2x squared plus 1, and say that's our g of x. So now we have to kind of think about what then would the f of x been that allows us to put this in to here. And with just a couple glances there, we can see that if we just replace that value under the square root with x, we can create another simple function. We're just working backwards, breaking them apart. And if we use that g of x and f of x, we could create this function h of x. Now that's not the only solution. There's many solutions that are possible. But let's try one more here. We want to figure out what could g be that went into f. Well, here's a simple function. g of x could have been 3x plus 4. Now, if that is the case, then f of x must have been 2 over x. If we take g and put it in for x, we're going to get h of x. There is our decomposition of a composite function. Well, there's one last piece. What if we have a graph and we're trying to determine the solution? Now we have an f of x and a g of x on a graph, and we want to find out what is the solution. Well, as we've done before, let's write this as f of g of negative 4. And what we want to find first is what is the output for g when the input is negative 4. So we come to our graph g of x. We look at negative 4, and at negative 4, the output, the y value, is 0. That means we are going to put 0 as our new input to f and find the solution. So this time we come to our function f, and when x is 0, we just have a look at our graph. The solution for f of 0 is just 2. And that final solution is the solution to our composite function. Let's finish with one more here. g of f of 3. Again, we want to do g of f of 3. We first want to find out what is the f of 3 output. Well, let's go to our function f. We count over 1, 2, 3 on our graph. We get a output of 4. There's our y solution. We now take that solution of 4 and put it into g. So let's go to our graph g. When g is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's our solution on the graph, and g of f of 3 ends up being 1. It's just that simple. And we're going to look at this in more detail in class.